Hello and welcome to the session. This is Farhat in which we would look at the categories of fund balance. Now, in order to understand what a fund balance is, we need some knowledge from the prior recordings. One is, do we know the five governmental funds? We have various governmental funds, such as the general fund, the special purpose revenue fund, debt service funds, capital project funds, and the permanent funds. And as a review, these funds use modified accrual accounting not full accrual modified accrual accounting also what you need to know in order to understand the fund balance is the elements of the financial statements which we also covered such as assets deferred outflow of resources liabilities deferred inflow of resources and when we net them out which is asset plus deferred inflow of resources minus liabilities and deferred inflow of resources will get to the fund balance and this is what we need to focus on because the other ones we covered the elements we covered the elements in a separate recording. now under the fund balance you're going to see we have five different categories of fund balance but if you really think about it for a moment what's the fund balance the difference between asset and liabilities which is called net asset but we're not going to call it net asset we're, we're not going to call it equity because the difference between asset and liabilities is equity we're not going to call it net position let's just focus on calling it fund ba fund balance so think fund balance as in quote the equity the equity of the government fund when you know the excess of assets over liabilities net asset but call it fund balance so in this session we'll focus on these various categories explaining what each category is with something you need to be very familiar with let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help, and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Can we define five categories to help us understand the restriction on these specific amounts? The first one is non-spendable fund balance. Restricted fund balance, committed fund balance, assigned fund balance, and unassigned fund balance. Now, why do I have non-spendable in yellow, highlighted in yellow, and the other one are in four? Another way to look at them are the two to five, those are spendable. Spendable, you can spend them. The non-spendable are non-spendable. So you can break these categories into an, one non-spendable category and five for spendable. Now, within the spendable, I listed them from the most restricted to the least restricted. So the restricted fund balance will be the most restricted. Committed will be less restricted than restricted. Assigned will be less restricted than committed and restricted. And unassigned is not restricted in any way, shape, or form, committed or assigned. So that's why I have them this way. Starting with the non-spendable fund balance, this category, this category includes funds that cannot be spent because they are they are not in spendable form. What are we? What's not in spendable form? For example, the government will have supplies, inventory, material. You, they cannot spend those. They're just not, not in spendable. Or they are legally or contractually not spendable. By law or by contract, you cannot spend them. Like what? Like if someone contributed money to the government and they said you can only spend the interest on that money. Well, guess what? The principal, let's assume they contributed $5 million in principle, the principal cannot be touched. It's considered non-spendable. These amounts are not available, simply put, for appropriation, for spending. They are non-spendable, just by law or by their nature. 
we're going to start with the spendable fund. And this is the first one of the spendable fund. But guess what? It's a spendable, but restricted. This represent amount that are restricted for specific purposes. And who restrict those? External parties, constitutional provision, or enabling legislation. This could be creditors, external parties, bankers, people that lend you money, grantors, other governments, contributors, someone who'd like to contribute money, but they want to restrict that money. They want to restrict the use of it for a specific purpose. It could be restricted by laws or regulation of other government because they gave you the money, imposed by law through constitutional provision or legislation. So it's restricted for a specific purpose. For example, we have a law that collect taxes on food and that taxes on food is to, to maintain the streets. It's restricted. The money collected is restricted. It's the most constrained category. It's the highest constrained category. We're going to go from restricted to committed. Well, this category include amounts that can be used for specific purpose that are imposed by formal action of the government highest level authority. But remember, this is the government highest authority within the county, within the city, within the township. So it's the local government. The, the people who are in charge of the government are making those commitment. Because of that, those commitment can be removed, can be changed by some, the same formal action. If they voted, if the city council voted for that decision to commit the funds, they can vote again and remove it. So they, the city council, they can change their mind. They can change their mind. For example, they committed some money for a new community center. They can change their mind. They can redeploy the fund somewhere else by taking the appropriate legal action. If it's the voting, voting. So simply put, those are contractual obligation. Yes, they are restricted by the highest local government, but there is no external force, no constitution, uh, ena uh, no enabling legislation is restricting them. It's the local government. Assigned fund balance. What's assigned fund balance? It's less restricted than restricted, less restricted than committed. This consists of amount intended to be used by the government for specific purpose, but do not need the classification of restricted and committed. Huh? Well, remember, we have restricted as the most restricted. Committed is the second one. Well, if it's not restricted, it's not committed, but we use it for a specific purpose, it's called assigned. It's intended to be spent by the government highest level of decision-making authority or by body or official to which the highest level has delegated the authority. For example, the highest level usually is the elected people, but elected people will have management, will have people running the government. So those funds are committed by management. Like for example, they will commit those in a budget. Those are called assigned. When I, I, I use the word committed in the wrong place because committed means it's more restricted than assigned. But simply put, management decide on how to spend this money. It's a lower authority. Think of it as a lower authority. So this is basically a residual balance of the restricted and the committed. So the funds are not restricted, not committed. They're not both, but management is using them for something else, decide to use them for something else, then they are assigned. So simply put, it's a residual balance for not restricted and not committed. An example, the best example is budgetary assignment for contingencies or anticipated projects. So we have something in the, in the budget once it's in the budget, it's, it's considered some sort of an assigned balance. And it's easy to change because man management decide on that. So we're going to go from unassigned to the best one, unassigned fund balance. Well, if it is not restricted, if it's not committed, if it's not assigned, and it's in spendable form, right? It has to be in spendable form. It's called unassigned. Unassigned means you can do anything with it. <laughs> the residual classification of the general fund. It represents fund balance that has not been assigned to other funds, that has not been restricted, committed, or assigned for a specific purpose within the general fund. So the general fund will have the unassigned fund balance. This is the portion that's available for, for whatever purpose we want to do. Whatever This is where the pol politicians love those balances because they can do whatever they want with them. Okay, so only, now bear in mind, only the general fund, remember we have five governmental fund, could have a positive unassigned fund balance. Make a note of this. I'm going to show you why later, shortly. Now, how about other funds? Other funds can have a negative fund balance. And when would they have a negative fund balance? When the expenditure in that fund exceeds the revenue, it means outflow exceeds the inflow, you will have negative 
negative fund balance. Otherwise, in the other funds, you're supposed to have a purpose for the money. It's, it's not supposed to be unassigned. It's supposed to be assigned, committed, or restricted. Well, if, it's, if, if it is assigned, restricted, or committed, and you have more expenditure than revenues, you're going to have a negative fund balance. Now, let's... Let's take a look at a multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. That's going to help us understand this concept. What distinguishes the restricted fund balance from other fund categories? So there's something unusual or special about the restricted fund. A, it can be altered by the government highest decision-making body. That's a tempting, that's a tempting one. It's the highest government decision budget. Must be the restricted fund. Actually, it's not. Because if it's imposed externally by a creditor or other government, even the highest government level within that locality cannot change it. So that's not the right answer. Because if it's restricted by an outsider, the highest government authority still can't change it. It's used for the general governmental operation. It can be, but that's not that's not what distinguishes it. That's not it could be restricted for the general could be, but that's not what distinguish the restrict the restricted fund. C, it's restricted, so B is out. Although B like kind of could be correct, it's restricted by external parties or laws for a specific purpose. This is a correct statement. B, what, what distinguishes, what distinguishes, what makes it special, what makes it special. Used for governmental operation doesn't make it special. But what makes it special is it's restricted for by external parties, someone outside the government or by laws for a specific purpose. There's a law. It's constitutionally and that's how we have to spend this money. Then that's what distinguished restricted fund. It represents resources not in a non-spendable form, not at all. It could be spendable. That's why it's restricted. It's spendable but restricted. So D is out. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. Governmental accounting is an important concept. If you're studying for your CPA exam, taking an accounting course, studying for some professional certification, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.